Matthew chapter 7, are you there? I enjoyed everything about trunk or treat, but I didn't enjoy the last slide. I don't know who put that slide together, but it had my hand, not in the candy jar, but in the, well, it was a candy jar, right? It had my hand in there, so it was like, I'm guilty. There was evidence there. I mean, I wish they would have got a picture, Phil, of me passing out candy to kids. But, um, you know, God does want us to laugh. There are going to be times that we're going to cry. Um, And I'm reminded of this. We are to be there, and we're to rejoice when others rejoice. Body of Christ. We're to rejoice when others rejoice, but we're to weep when others weep. That's part of the body of Christ. Matthew chapter 7, are you there? Say amen. Amen. We're going to close this this morning with this series that I started several, several weeks ago. And looking at this sermon today, I believe it's very, very fitting. We look back at just uh, last week, and he talks about two ways. And my topic this morning is only two. The title of my sermon this morning is there's, there's only two choices. There's only two decisions that people will make. There are only two directions that you can go in life. And there are only two destinations. But in Matthew chapter 7, he talks about two ways. He talks about the narrow that leads to life, and then he talks about the, 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 the wide road that leads to destruction. And let me say that narrow road that leads to life, we could say that that would be the start of the Christian life. The beginning of our Christian life, because he says to enter into that, to that gate. The very beginning. Do you remember the day that the Lord saved you? Or the day that you became a follower of Christ? Do you remember that day? The best day of my life. So we we see two ways here, but then in this chapter, not only do we see two ways, but we see two trees. He talks about the good and he talks about the bad or the corrupt. The good tree is the one that grows and produces fruit. And Jesus even says this. He says, people will know you by your fruit, by your life. A life of faith growing to be more like Christ. And that's what he wants for us. If if we're a believer today and we have started in this Christian life following him and walking after him, his desire for us is to grow and to be more like him. So we see two ways, we see two trees, but as we get to the end of this chapter, we see two houses. And this would... This would uh, illustrate the end of this life of faith. And as we talk about these two houses, we think about who's speaking here. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. It is Jesus is speaking. The master builder, the master carpenter is building, and he's talking about how to build a house. But we're not going to talk about how to build a house today. We're going to talk about how to build a life. That's what it's about. It's not just about building a house, but how to build your house life. He talks about two ways. He talks about two trees, but here he talks about two houses. And let me submit to you today, there are only two. There are only two. Jesus, the master carpenter, is talking about more than just building a house, but how do you build your life? Both these men, they built houses First of all, both these men, they, they had a desire to build a house. They had the right desire. Both of them built houses that looked good on the outside. Both heard what God said. 
Both of them did. Both of them experienced storms in their life. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. If you're there this morning, can I hear a hearty amen? Amen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended... And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and when he's saying that, he's talking about what he just preached to them. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and this chapter right here, the Sermon on the Mount the ones that are hearing what I'm saying and doeth them not. He's going to be like a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we want to thank you for your words. Words that comfort us. God, how we need that this morning. Your word is able to comfort us in the trials and in the storms that we're going through. God, I ask that you'll do that this morning. that you will comfort those that need to be comforted. But we not only know that your word's able to comfort us, but it's able to convict, it's able to afflict us. And conviction is, is something that's good, God. Conviction tells us that we're on the wrong road and we need to change. Conviction tells us that the life that we're building is on the wrong foundation, God. God, we are thankful for your conviction today also. But God, the word of God today in your word is able to change us and to conform us and to make us more like you. And that is our desire today, Lord. Everyone that's here, God, as we leave here this morning, God, that we will be more like you. That you will comfort those that need to be comforted convict those that need to be convicted, change those that need to be changed, and those that need to be conformed into your image and made more like you, that you will do that this morning, God. We're thankful for your love. God, your love doesn't change for us. No matter how good or how bad or what I'm going through, God, I am. I am thankful for your love. Help us today, God. If you don't help me, Lord, I'm not going to be able to preach. I'm not going to be able to share your word today, but I do need your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone said? Two ways, two trees, and two houses. And I want you to notice what it says in verse 24 again. It talks about the 
the man that's going to build his house. What a challenge for us today as men. God has called us to be leaders and to build our spiritual house with the right foundation. He has called us to do that. But it talks about the two different builders, the, the man that was, that was very wise, the one that was following the Lord, the one that was pursuing the Lord, that built upon the right foundation, and the one that God says, Jesus says, was foolish because he built his house not upon a rock, but he built his house upon the sand. And I want you to notice what happens here. Storms are going to come. Storms are going to come, and they're going to come from every angle because his word tells us here that, that, that both houses, whether it was built upon the sand or whether it was built upon the, the rock, both houses experienced the storms of life. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost, whether you're built upon, your life is built upon the rock or whether it's built upon the sand. And when I say the rock, we're talking about the rock, Jesus Christ. Because here's what he said later on in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. You're saying, well, what's he referring to when he talks about the rock? Here's what he said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He said, upon this rock, Petra in the Greek, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this is his church, amen? And the church is built upon Christ, Christ alone. That is the foundation of the church. And he said the gates of hell is not going to prevail against it. So when the storms come from every angle, we're going to stand. Why? Because of our foundation. It's strong. It's secure, Brother Sean. It's solid. The, nothing's going to happen to the foundation. And you see, life happens this way. The rain descended first. Have you been there before? That's the first problem. And the rain comes. And it doesn't stop there. The rain doesn't stop. Because after the rain, the flooding comes. So not only are we getting it from above, but we're getting it from below. And it doesn't stop there. It says not only the rain and the floods, but then it says the wind. Someone said this morning, they said, I didn't get outside yesterday. I didn't want to leave the house. Why? Because it was cold and it was windy. Can I hear an amen right there? Right? That's how life's going to happen. The storms are going to come. The rain, the floods, and the wind. But the man that was building his house, his spiritual life, on the right foundation, here's what happened. When the rain came, and the floods came, and the wind, his house, it was still standing. That's when you know someone has the right foundation and their faith is truly in Christ. It's when the storms of life are, 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 are raging and I've had them. Have you had them? We've had them in the last week. We've had them in the last month. We've had them in the last... The storms of life are raging and it, the rain is coming and, and the floods are, 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 are there and, and the wind is beating upon our house and the house is still going to stand because of the foundation. Christ is our foundation. Notice the difference here. And... and Here's what he's saying. He's saying the one house was built upon the sand, the one house was built upon the rock. Notice what it says in verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. So you go back to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7. If you're not following his teachings, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. 
they've heard, both have heard. One is following, one is obeying, one is pursuing Christ in his word, and one is not. What kind of person is he? It says he's a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the same storms, as I just mentioned, that, that will come to someone that's saved will come to someone that's not saved. I've been through them. Have you been through some storms? The storms will come, and because their house is built upon the sand, it will not stand the test of time and the storms that they go through. The difference is that Christ is he who is is he the one that we're building our life on? Are we building our life upon the things here or the things when it comes to eternity? Is it about the the things that's on the surface or the things that people can can see, or is it about the things that people can't see? What kind of foundation do we have? Let's turn to Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18. Christ is our rock. Secure, solid, sure, and that's what we're anchored to today. That's how we're going to that's how we're going to survive. That's how we're going to stand before him one day is because he is the one that we're putting our faith and trust in. But notice what the writer says here. Psalm chapter 18 verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my, say it with me, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. So he's saying that God is my all in all and I'm I'm attached to him. I'm anchored to him. I'm holding on to him. The storms of life are going to come. But I have the right foundation. Several years ago, a boy was called away in a storm the hurricane, and all he had to hold on to was a rock. That's all he had to hold on to. His house was gone, his family was gone, and all he had to hold on to was a rock. The wind, the rain, the flooding came, but he held on to the rock, and he survived the storm. And after the storm, they interviewed him, and they asked him what happened, and he said this. He said, many times during the storm, I moved, and I was shaken. But not one time did the rock move. Many times I moved, and I was shaken, but not one time did the rock move. And I thought about my life. There are many times that I have moved, and I've been shaken But I'm thankful today, 2016, right? November what? 21st. 20th. I'm a day, okay. I'm a day behind or day early. But not one time has the rock moved. Not one time. Storms of life are going to come. But we have the right foundation. How do we know 
what foundation we're building on? How do you know? Pastor, I'm here today. How, how do you know that if I'm building on the sand or if I'm building on the rock upon Christ, how do you know? Do you know he tells us in his word? It doesn't matter what you say. We find that out from right here. Y'all listening? It doesn't matter what we say because we can say, Lord, I've done this or I've done that. It doesn't matter what we say. God's the one that has the final say. God has the final say. So how do we know which foundation we're building on? He tells us. He said, the person that does the things that I ask him to do, they're building on the right foundation. Don't take that up with me. Take that up with God. If you're not in obedience to God and to his word, according to him, you are building on the wrong foundation. And I know it's quiet, but that's the truth. He said, the person that does the things that I've asked him to do, and our salvation is not about doing. It's not. It's about being. It's about being a follower of Christ. But you know what? To be a follower of Christ, you have to obey him. Are you obedient to him? Are you in complete obedience to him? He's saying, if you do these things, he's like a person that's building his house up on the rock. But if you don't do the things that I've told you to do, you're building on the sand. And then the storms are going to come, and the house that's built on the sand is not going to stand. But the house that's built upon the rock, upon Christ, our solid rock, our foundation, that house is going to stand. Obedience to his will is the test of true faith in Christ. Anything outside of obedience to his word, let me say this, anything outside of obedience to his word is building on the wrong foundation. As we read this in Matthew, there's only two. We think about there's only two decisions. There's only two directions and there's only two destinations. And when the storms of life come, and they will, and I believe this is speaking of judgment, will you be able to stand? Will you be able to stand when judgment comes? An evangelist was preaching a meeting. There was a young lady there that she knew that she needed to accept Christ as her Savior. But she wasn't ready to commit her life to Christ. He was getting ready to leave the meeting. He was getting ready to get on a train and leave that town. And she called up with him and she asked him about what he had preached. And talked to her, him about her predicament. She said, I'm just not ready to commit my life to Christ yet. And he explained to her, he said, you only have really two choices. Her name was Mary. And he said, Mary, he said, I'm going to write this down for you. He wrote down on a piece of paper and he said, I, Mary, reject Christ as my personal Savior. He said, I want you to sign it. Would you be willing to sign this that you reject Christ as your Savior. Because you know what? He came to save each and every one of us. Would you be willing to sign? And she said, no, I can't sign that. And then he put on another piece of paper. He said, I, Mary, receive Christ as my personal Savior. Will you be willing to do that? She realized that she had to do one of them. If she didn't receive him, if she didn't receive him, she was rejecting him. Because you can't have it both ways. He's either Lord over all of our life or he's not Lord 
at all in our life. She took that paper and she says, I want to receive Christ as my personal Savior. I want to say yes to Jesus Christ. Where are you at today? Where are you at today? You can't have it both ways. What are you building your life on today? If you're building your life on the sand, it's going to come crumbling down. If you're building your life on things here in this earth, it's going to come crumbling down. Are you building your life upon Christ Jesus? When you do that, the storms will come, but I am thankful that we can stand through the storms of life. When the storms come, and they will, and they have, we can stand. Let's bow our heads this morning.